We know what you're thinking. You come to Skill Cap to learn the ins and outs of intense gladiatorial combat from some of the best players in the world. You don't come to us to learn about what flowers or rocks you ought to be clicking on, but it's not an exaggeration to say that the bonuses offered by professions in Season 5 are the strongest we've ever seen. You need to know what's good, what sucks, and more importantly, how to navigate the chaos of the expansion's launch to ensure that your character is at its best as soon as possible. But professions alone won't prepare you for what's to come in Wrath Classic. You might build your rocket gloves, but without the knowledge and experience of the most hardcore Wrath players around, you may as well stick to herbalism and mining. For those looking to make the most of their shiny new rocket gloves though, we've got you covered at SkillCap.com, where our specialized class courses give you everything you need to conquer Wrath of the Lich King. We've been working hard with the world's best players, taking their thousands of hours of experience to fast track the learning experience of players just like you. And with a rating game guarantee or your money back, you have nothing to lose. Visit the link below for an exclusive discount offer. Quick disclaimer, while we are confident that Blizzard is not going to significantly alter professions during Wrath Classic Beta, there is always the possibility for hashtag some changes. Be sure to be subscribed to SkillCap to get up to date news on all things Wrath Classic. Let's kick things off at the B tier with some professions you should probably avoid unless you are completely broke. At the bottom of our list, we have Mining, which will provide you an additional 60 stamina upon reaching 450 skill points. There isn't a ton to say on this. Stamina is nice, but not something we really see players prefer over offensive stats. There are far more potent options available for PvP. Staying with the gathering professions, next up we have Herbalism. Herbalists require lifeblood, an instant heal over time effect on a 3 minute cooldown. Maybe there is some alternative universe where a clutch lifeblood play wins BlizzCon, and much as we want to see that, the truth is, lifeblood sucks. The heal scales extremely poorly, to the point where it might as well be static. Lifeblood will get proportionally worse as Wrath Classic progresses. It'll be worth around 20% of your health in Season 5 Best in Slot and drop down under 15 by Wrath Classic. Add a Mortal Strike debuff to that and you are going to struggle to notice the healing. As much as we may want to love Lifeblood, we must leave it here in the B tier, we can do better. Moving on, Skinning provides a passive bonus of 40 critical strike rating. It's worth just a smidge under 1% crit chance. That's alright, but it's nothing to write back to Dalaran about. We can't think of anyone who would prefer 40 crit over other perks of the professions above it on this tier list. It is worth mentioning though that Skinning is probably the easiest profession to level during an expansion launch. You won't be fighting for every flower and mining node. Skinning is an almost passive money maker while you're leveling. Moving on from violence against animals to violence against your fellow man, let's talk about tailoring. Now, we don't want to pick on tailors. Everyone needs a hobby. After a stressful day of queuing RMP, some quiet knitting is self-care. While it is low on this list, tailoring is not without its perks. Sapphire Spell Thread is going to be very expensive in the early weeks of Wrath Classic, but tailors have the ability to enchant their own legs with the same effect essentially for free. If you're a broke wizard, this may genuinely be something to consider. But sadly, this is where the good news ends for our dear tailors. The bonuses on offer to tailors are these three embroideries. The spell power proc was notorious for inconsistent proc rates. While it's possible to imagine a timely light weave proc causing a huge swing in momentum, it's just as likely to trigger at an inopportune time. With the way dots function in Wrath Classic, the damage is snapshot upon application of the dot. That means casters will need to reapply their dots for them to see the benefit of this proc, another clunky element of it. This is all while this proc is displaced 35 spell penetration cloak enchant that casters would otherwise use. For these reasons, we can't recommend tailoring for most classes in PvP during Wrath of the Lich King Classic. The A tier are our safe picks. While not the most powerful professions on this list, all of these professions offer a large amount of static attack or spell power. At 400 skill points, Inscription provides players with empowered shoulder enchant. Though the benefit they provide matches the other professions in our A tier, we've put it at the bottom for PvP. This is for a few reasons. The Inscription enchant is a strictly better version of the enchant from Sons of Hodir. The bonus itself is good, but you are locked into that nasty critical strike. Most PvP focused players will at least want the option of running the Winter Grasp enchant that drops the crit for resilience, but if you take Inscription, you're going to be stuck with the crit chance. Though minor, strength users should also be aware that any attack power bonus is going to be worth slightly less than an equivalent budget of strength. For instance, 40 strength gives a Retribution Paladin more than 80 attack power. Finally, making money with Inscription can be a real pain. You need to know what sells, and keep a diversified inventory of stock produced from material collected from Silithus to Ice Crown. 
So with that said, let's move on and talk about enchanting. At 400, enchanting players will unlock the ability to enchant each of their rings with one of three exclusive enchants. Not that exciting, but hey, extra stats! Enchanting is the ultimate city slickers profession. If you want a way to make money without needing to leave the comfort of Dalaran sewers, buying cheap greens out of trade chat and disenchanting them for a profit, this is the profession for you, my friend. Let's move on to what may be our controversial pick, blacksmithing. Now I know what you're thinking, blacksmithing is in A tier? Skill capped must have played one too many arena matches, but hear us out. Though blacksmithing seems ubiquitous for most of Wrath of the Lich King, during early Wrath Classic, blacksmithing is going to be held back by one thing, blue quality gems. Blacksmiths gain the ability to add an additional socket to their bracers and gloves. This means that the introduction of epic gems in patch 3.2 was a buff to blacksmithing. To compensate for this, the other professions saw a buff in their bonuses to bring them up to par with blacksmithing. But oh no, when Wrath Classic launches in September, epic gems won't be obtainable. So while enchanters will be running around next Ramus with 80 extra attack power on their rings, Blacksmiths will be limited to a tragic 64 attack power. This will mean blacksmithing will provide 20% less stats than all other professions in our A tier until epic gems are released in the relentless season. But wait, there's more. It gets worse. While most profession bonuses are cheap to access, blacksmiths need to use regular old gems at regular old prices. If you remember the highway robbery around gems during the launch of TBC Classic, this will make you nervous. Blacksmithing is the first profession on this list to be truly, infamously expensive to level. If you pick up blacksmithing before epic gems, you will be paying through the nose to be less powerful than everybody else. So if we're so down on poor old blacksmithing, why is it in our A tier? As we made sure to emphasize, blacksmithing will be brought up to par once epic gems are implemented. And in the meantime, the power offered by blacksmithing remains appealing because of its flexibility. The ability to substitute the 80 attack power bonus of this A tier for 32 armor penetration will be a tempting offer for some players. Moving on now to alchemy, a profession with some odd quirks. Everyone knows that flasks and potions can't be used in the arena. That posed a problem for alchemists whose profession bonus, Mixology, increases the benefit they receive from flasks. Without being able to use a flask in arena, alchemy couldn't get their bonus. That meant that alchemy was a dead pick in arena. Thankfully in patch 3.2, Blizzard addressed this with the Flask of the North. Acquiring 425 alchemy skill will allow you to craft a flask that is usable in arena and not consumed when used. It's one and done. A sip of this thing will give you one of these stats. Also, strength users take note, this is the only profession besides blacksmithing and jewel crafting that will let you take strength over attack power. Just keep in mind that if you are a hybrid class like a paladin, the flask can't tell what spec you are, so it cycles between spell power and strength. If you get the wrong buff, just drink from the flask again. To finish off our A tier, we have leatherworking. Leatherworking has all the benefits of tailoring without the drawbacks. 400 skill in leatherworking will unlock improved bracer enchants. Leatherworking's biggest perk is that you get essentially the same benefits as the rest of the tier while also saving a ton of gold. It's a relatively painless pick that is perfect for any physical DPS picking up Wrath Classic without a lot of resources. As with Inscription, the bonus is limited to attack power, but Leatherworking also offers the player the ability to apply an epic quality armor kit to their legs essentially for free. This is a huge gold saving benefit to those who are picking up a physical DPS. If you pair Leatherworking with Skinning while leveling up to 80, the journey should easily net you enough material to pick up the profession bonuses without needing to go out of your way. Finally, the reason many of you are here, the S tier professions, where the S stands for sweaty. Jewel crafting is our first pick here, and if you have any knowledge of Wrath of the Lich King, this won't come as a surprise. JCs are offered their own empowered gems, and this brings with it all the versatility of blacksmithing while also simply offering better numbers than the other professions. You thought alchemists had it good with their 40 strength flask? How about 42 strength for jewel crafting? But notice that 42 number comes from a comparison to epic gems. As we've mentioned, Wrath Classic won't have epic gems at launch, so each 34 strength gem is competing with the messy 16 strength rare quality gems. So in reality, you're going to be receiving 54 additional strength from using 3 bold dragon's eyes over 3 bold scarlet rubies. But that comparison misses the true benefit, because it's the option to pick up stats like armor penetration that really sets jewel crafting apart from something like alchemy. And that is where the versatility of JC really shines. It gives players the ability to sculpt the benefit with far more potency than any other profession. You don't need to settle for attack power as a strength user. You don't need to give up an enchanting slot. The power is in your hands and your shoulders and helm. 
Acquiring JC recipes and Dragon's Eye gems involves daily quests, and while we aren't crazy for them here at Skillcapped, we can say they're tolerable. Jewel crafting is going to be considered a must-have profession in both PvE and PvP. It's very deserving of a spot in our S tier, but keep in mind that training up JC is not going to be for the faint of heart. Next up in our S tier, the one you've all been waiting for, we have Engineering. If you played Wrath back in the day, you will remember that Engineering was good, but Engineering is better than you remember, literally. The Engineering glove attachments have static values, and for the first two seasons of Wrath, received buffs to stop them from falling behind the curve. By the end of the expansion, the hand-mounted pyro rocket dealt two-thirds more damage with a shorter cooldown than it did at launch. If Wrath Classic launches with this final version of the rocket as we expected to, it will be significantly stronger than it was in the original Season 5. It's an instant cast, does not trigger the GCD, and is capable of critting, all on a 45 second cooldown. We're expecting RMP to make use of triple rocket setups, bringing back memories of triple dress to gath trinkets in BFA Season 4. Engineering's famous nitro boosts and grenades can't be used in arena, but are great tools for battlegrounds and world PvP. Engineers also have access to a deployable parachute that can be used in arena. Most players probably won't find a lot of use for this, but hunters regularly took advantage of the parachute to extend the distance covered by disengage. But it's not all good news. Engineering is a very expensive profession to level, and its options for making gold are not as strong as other options on this list. For most players, engineering is going to be an investment, something that you pay to maintain. But for that investment, engineers will be rewarded with what will undoubtedly be the most impactful profession. In an arena game, you won't notice whether the enemy priest is a scribe or enchanter, but you will notice if they're an engineer. Engineering offers an impact that no other profession can match, and that is exactly what the best players want from their tools. Engineering substitutes the abstract power of better gems, or 0.7% crit bonuses, and turns it into something tangible, a rocket, pointed directly at the enemy warlock's face. And that is why you should be an engineer in Wrath Classic. We can't move on without reminding you to level your first aid. As always, Wrath Classic's bandages have static values and will be at their most impactful during Season 5. To make sure you aren't left behind the curve, you're going to need the recipe for heavy frost weave bandages. The manual is a world drop that can drop from any undead or humanoid in any high level Northrend zone. To be eligible to get the drop, you need to have at least 390 skill points in first aid, so make sure you are taking time to train first aid while leveling up to pick up the recipe without any hassle. So after all that, what profession is right for you? The easy answer would be to simply say level JC and engineering. Those are the best professions and anything else is a mistake. While that statement is technically correct, keep in mind that Classic is going to provide some significant challenges to players picking up Wrath Classic for the first time. TBC Classic players have been earning absurd amounts of gold through GDKP raids for the majority of TBC Classic. It's quite likely that these players are going to dominate the economy and shut out players who have come to Wrath Classic for the PvP. That means you need a plan for your professions and to be honest with yourself about how much time and effort you're willing to invest into them. Are you prepared to spend hours flying laps of the storm peaks for a tiny amount of serenite? If not, it may be worth considering other options. Skinning and leatherworking are easy and cost efficient professions that will allow you to unlock their bonuses just while leveling. While not an optimal setup, the bonuses from that are more than sufficient for you to roll straight into PvP. Take professions in Wrath Classic seriously, but don't let your return to Northrend be spoiled by feeling forced to chase the meta on professions. But this is skill capped. We've trained you to be uncompromising in the pursuit of success. So if you're dead broke, but insist on leveling JC and engineering as quickly as possible after the expansion comes out, here's what we recommend. Techniques like this have been used frequently by the best PvE players to optimize their professions. You're going to want to start preparing at least a few days before Wrath Classic launches. You're going to pick up mining and engineering and begin to level them up. You want to get engineering to at least 350 skill points. The higher the better, but you don't need to push it. Then you're going to continue mining and build up a supply of material that you will use to level jewel crafting up to 350 later. There are loads of profession guides online that will give an estimate on the amount of materials you will need. You're going to mail all of the materials to an alt where it can sit in that character's mailbox. Once the Wrath Classic releases, you're going to repeat the same process, leveling up engineering to at least 405 before beginning to stockpile Northrend material to level jewel crafting. This part will be easier said than done. There's going to be a lot of competition for those nodes. Remember, you are about to drop mining and you won't be able to afford to buy materials. Don't risk being undersupplied. You can just sell whatever you don't use. Once you are certain you have enough material, go ahead and drop mining for JC and train it up to 370 with everything you've collected. But that's it for our suggestions. Let us know in the comments below what professions you plan to play with in Wrath of the Lich King. 
And while you're at it, consider checking out skillcap.com, where you can find all the help you need in WoW PvP today, featuring a money-back guarantee if you don't gain at least 400 rating while using our website. All right, guys, that about wraps it up for this one. And once again, hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all Wrath of the Lich King and Dragonflight news. As always, though, we want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.